When I first started talking about my eating disorder to people, like everything was choppy and nonsensical. It mm. wouldn't even, I couldn't even formulate sentences about it. It just, it just sounded so trivial and it would never express exactly how I felt. So I felt like I shouldn't be expressing it at all. I think you can go for so long without talking that you lose the words. For me, my, my eating problems and then my eating disorder developed alongside other mental health problems, um, which all sort of spiralled out of control when I was 17 and in my final year of sets form. Stopped eating and started running maybe three or four hours a day, so I didn't have a job, and really um, lost a lot of weight and found a lot of control in it, but it was making me very, very unhappy. But at dinner time, my mum was really concerned that I'd lost so much weight. So made these big dinners for me to eat. And I wanted her to feel like I was better. And I wanted her to feel that I was well. So I'd eat them and then start purging them afterwards. And I got a job in a coffee shop, which I loved. And got happier and felt more comfortable about eating. But couldn't get out of the habit of purging after I was eating. And that kind of spiralled into patterns of binging and purging that carried on. I mean, you talked a bit about family being a trigger. Yeah. But a big trigger for me is is any emotional reaction to anything, positive or negative, um, I really struggle to manage that. It, it overwhelms me and, and a way to get back in control of myself and almost focus attention on something other than this horrible, churning gut of feeling is to engage in binging and purging. I had a restrictive eating disorder for a while and then Sorry, I, I've never heard that, restrictive eating disorder. I call it a restrictive eating disorder <laughs> as opposed to anorexia because I just, I don't, it's like the anorexic mind that I have is that I wasn't thin enough to be anorexic. Yes, no, I could, like, I, I completely yeah. agree with you. Like, that's, that's a really good point. Like, did you feel that, that you weren't ever, like, anorexic enough to... Yeah, I thought I was never good enough, full stop, so therefore I wasn't thin enough. I, I, whatever I did was never good enough, and with pressure for sixth form and for GCSE, all the work that I did wasn't good enough, getting an A-star wasn't good enough. That's how my brain works. Like whenever like I speak to my friends who are suffering and they're always like, I'm challenging this, I'm challenging that. Like it always makes me feel a bit like, like a fake because I never really had that. That's something that everyone said. Like th this is why I didn't go to therapy for so long because nobody, like you, you hear stories about like anorexics and you were never anorexic enough. You never kind of, yeah. uh, and I, I couldn't, I tried, but I could never go like days without eating. Yeah. Um, it would always be like, you know, what have you had? Well, I've had, I, I don't want to be triggered, so I won't go into it, but I always had, used to have kind of restrictive food, so I'm kind of in between you. But it's amazing, nobody else is talking about that. That yeah. really frustrates me. Like it's different for everyone. Each individual disorder is kind of tailor-made for them in a way. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. When I was at college once, I had a bar of chocolate and a girl came up to me and said, aren't you supposed to be anorexic? Oh. <laughs> I was like, are you kidding? When you do enter recovery, it's like going completely against what has been your norm for so long, and that is so difficult. And you're processing all these new emotions all over again. Everything that your eating disorder has numbed in the past will resurface. Mm. And, you're ha and then you do have the ability to feel again. Yeah. And yes. Then, yeah, do and you? that's scary. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, <laughs> I can like, like, for the longest time, I couldn't feel strongly about anything. So subjects I'd feel passionate about, I couldn't engage with because I'd be like, yeah, I don't really have an opinion. Yeah. And something that's helped me like with the recovery is I've got my opinions back. I believe in things again. I've got opinions. I can speak again, which I know sounds stupid, but... No, 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 no. <laughs> my, my, one of my friends um, described it as be, like, your personality becomes diluted. Yeah. Yeah, that's and a that's, good that's I thought that was great. I was like spot on. But um, yeah, it, it does dilute you. I know exactly what you mean. Like I was completely just didn't care. I was just like whatever about everything. And that's one of the reasons why I changed. Though that's one of the reasons why I was like I need myself back. I felt like not only had I lost weight, but I lost who I was. I didn't know who I was anymore, and I felt completely without identity as well as being like my identity is having a eating disorder. Yeah. And I think the thing I had to accept in stopping binging and purging was that the issue was trying to restrict because that would trigger it. If I thought it was good, I thought restricting was me, not, was me getting better from binging and purging. So about six months ago, um, I started really a concerted effort towards recovering. 
Mm. And with the occasional lapse, I've been mostly success. Well, not successful, but it's it's dominated a much less of my life, and I oh, eat a lot more regularly now. I get my primary support online, like I blog, connecting with so many people with eating disorders and similar problems, and that's how I've really learned to be more assertive, be more confident in myself. Seeing people from horrible states get to wonderful states and it's just so inspiring so being part of like blogging communities yeah. has been amazing for me yeah so. i'd spent quite a lot on a uh, lot of time online when i was trying to recover but wasn't recovering i was still underweight and stuff like that if you support people and say like you don't have to be like this and you are worth changing then you you get that back and i think that is probably you know and the majority of the support came from online but then, you know, I have a few people in my life who have said, you know, I've been through what you've been through. Not exactly the same thing, but I can talk to you at any time. And it's lovely to have people understand exactly how you feel or a tiny bit how you feel. Try and find stuff online. Everyone just talks about recovery really glibly. Like, you just wake up one Tuesday. I've never read anyone that said that they're scared to give it up. I am sort of deluding myself that I am in recovery because the truth of the matter is, I, I, I don't want to get rid of this, but I want to get rid of the depression. Yeah, like, I think the most important thing is when you're going through recovery is no one tells you how absolutely dire it will be at the beginning and how every bit of your body will be like, no, 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 no. And pushing through it will make your depression a million times worse. So I think when you do enter recovery, like getting support is so important. And that doesn't necessarily mean through a therapist. It means like you can get it from friends, family, online, doctors, like anything that helps.